take a little while. It's preparing. Oh, there stream. it is. Got it. Okay. So it's preparing to stream. And can you can you see it? Oh, okay. I believe that we are live. So hi everyone. Happy Friday. This is Lisa Cassenti here, and I am so excited, so honored to be here with a very special guest. Um, before I introduce the amazing Sabrina Mars, I would like to share a little bit about myself and what I'm doing here. So as I said, I'm Lisa Cassenti, and I am very proud to be an entrepreneur and a professional network marketer. So basically, I became the accidental entrepreneur. Well, I was going through a health journey of my own. I was introduced to something that was quite remarkable. And not only did it give me or restore my own health, but it also gave me my father back after he suffered a major neurological event. So I have decided that my mission in life is going to be to educate others all around the globe about this amazing technology. So why I'm here today is that one of the ways that I can help other amazing entrepreneurs is that I can spend time, interview them, and let other people hear their story and hear how they've gotten to where they are. So today is such a day, and I'm super excited to introduce all of you to Sabrina Morris. So Sabrina and I have known each other for quite some time. We met through a networking group called One Business Connection, and I am grateful every single day that we have connected. Sabrina is in, she is an enterprise architect and entrepreneur. So basically what that means is Sabrina has been solving problems for companies for many years. She has over 10 years of experience doing this, solving huge problems for corporate America. And what she actually did, and she'll go into this, is she transitioned from corporate America to entrepreneurship. And this journey took a lot of courage, a lot of grit, and it took her using and leveraging her mother's incredible wisdom as an entrepreneur. So today she is here with us, so she can talk about her incredible book, that is, has just launched. It's a limitless success. So Sabrina, so excited to, to have you here. Thank you so much, Lisa, for having me today. And I wanna to speak to your audience just for a moment about you. So I wanna tell everyone who is fortunate enough to have made the decision to join Lisa's team you guys have the best servant, and I'm going to use this word, and I don't use it loosely, servant leader. When we do our networking events, Lisa is very key on supporting each and every one of us through our introductions and team. Whenever you have a challenge, whenever you need someone to bounce your ideas off of, go to Lisa. She's excellent for that. She's not going to prejudge you, which is great. She keeps an open mind and she's always positive. No matter how hard her day is, you will not know that talking to her unless we go outside the box and have a conversation, but you just would not know. So Lisa, I want to thank you for being Lisa and thank you for being an amazing team lead, servant leader. Your team is fortunate to have you. And I'm happy that we're going to be sharing with your team today. Oh, Sabrina, I am sending you a huge hug. I cannot, you just made my day. Sending you so much love. I, that meant you touched my heart so much. And well, I, you I cannot thank you. Sure. I can, well, thank you. I didn't expect that. I cannot, I cannot thank you enough. Um, I, I am so excited about you sharing with not only my team, but people, you know, my friends, my family, because the road that you had was not an easy road. And I think that you can, I mean, life, life can be really difficult. And it's about how you judge your situations, the language you use, your mindset, 
and what you choose to do with situations. Everybody has choices. So I really, your message is an incredible one. And I think it's going to not only lift up entrepreneurs who are new and saying, you know, and their family are, is saying that they are crazy. What are they doing? But I believe it can lift up people with health challenges, people that are just going through tough times in life. It's the holidays. A lot of people think it's a time for celebration and it is, but I, I just talked to someone yesterday and this is just a really hard time for her, the holidays. Um, she's missing someone that she loved very much. So not to get off track, but Sabrina, please, your story is, is incredible. So, so tell us, tell us about, tell us about the inspiration behind the book. And I know it's about your journey. So, so tell us, why did you choose to share such vulnerable parts of yourself and your journey to share it with the world? So one of the key points, and I want to do a shout out to the lady who's having a challenge missing or, or gentleman or all of those in the audience who's having a really tough time missing their loved ones in this season. And I'm just going to be transparent with each of you just for one moment. Yesterday, I had to take a down day. So if I start crying, it's not a sign of weakness. Let's not get it twisted. I just miss my mother, who's my best friend. She, she was my inspiration. She was an entrepreneur her whole life, came from a family of entrepreneurs. And in her memory, uh, the portion of the book that was written is dedicated to her wisdom and her memory. We would tease my mother, and I'm, and we're talking about this because those of you who are, you know, missing a loved one, just go ahead and put a emoji in the in the um, live so so we know that we're we're talking to each other right now because it's not easy. And one thing my mother always said, and this is where her wisdom always comes into play. She would say, baby, you have your memories. So for each of you who are facing that challenge right now, where you're missing that loved one, you're missing that hug, you're missing that smile, you're missing that moment, go back in your mind's eye. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. You may need to cry and get it out, go for a run, go for a hike. Go to the spa, do something in their memory and celebrate them because you have those memories and no one can ever take those memories from you. And those memories can get you through some of the toughest times of the season. So just reach back. You'll, you may start off crying, but find a fun memory where you guys would laugh and then you'll finish that with laughter. So not making it small by any means. And don't listen to those people who don't understand where they're like, oh, they don't want you to cry. Or it's been a long time, you should be over it. No, no one tells you how to mourn your family member, but you. So go back into those memories, leverage my mother's wisdom, and enjoy those memories. So I know we're, we're, we're talking about that right now because it's a time for that. And then we'll also shift for just a moment, which goes to the same line of listening to other people. So there's a lot of times in our life when we step out to do something brave and to take another direction in our life that may not be accepted by everyone in your current, and I'm gonna put quotes around there, current, because that can change, but your current community. One of the things we always say is when you receive input for someone, check it and see if they have the life that you want. If you're stepping out and you're moving towards a goal for entrepreneurship, then we'll talk about some of the things you can do while you're still working the nine to five or you're still in the grind and your heart is like, I want to be over there, but you're still like, I have all this stuff in front of me. What can I do to help the transition? And we'll hit that as well. But whatever you do, there are dream stillers out there. Do not allow anybody, and I'm going to lean in and scare you just a minute. <laughs> 
Do not allow anybody to steal your dream, especially in, in dream stealers are mad because you are stepping out. You are doing something that they, they know they don't have the guts to do. And they don't know how to say, you know what? I celebrate you. I'm so excited. High five that you are going out and doing this. No, they're going to tear you down because you're doing something that they always wanted to do and did not have the courage to do it. Okay. And do not forget that. I'm going to say that again if I can. You are showing them the things in their life that they could not achieve or do. So do not listen to the dream stealers. If you do, I'm going to throw a pin at you guys. I'm going to find you guys somewhere and I'm going to throw a pin from a distance at you. It's going to hit you where you are and say, well, wait, this person does not have the life that I aspire to. So that leads to something else. Each of you need to find a new tribe. And I know this now, I'm not telling you guys something that I haven't personally done myself. So I, I will tell you, all of you in the audience, one or two things, don't be stupid like me, or this is something I had to do myself, which is not easy. And sometimes as you go forth in your new entrepreneurship career or goals, or, or you have this amazing idea that you're going to implement, you will find that there's a lot of people you will have to kind of separate yourself from a little bit because now they're, they're in their mission, their life, and you're going to grow in a different way. As an entrepreneur, one of the key things we tell you is to work on you first. So there are people out there that says, oh, those self-help books, ah, why would you buy? And they're the main ones that need to be buying every book that's on the shelf, reading, listening to every podcast out there. They need to pull, you know, uh, uh, a, an amazing uh, coach and sit them in front of the table every instant of the day. So don't listen to those people. Start with you first, because what you have on the inside, when you have your teams, when you're running your company, that's going to be perpetuated throughout the organization. So the, you can tell a lot about a leader based on their team. So work on you first. Okay. So is that pretty good, Lisa? Or do you have any hey, ideas? I love, I love this. I love all these gems that you are throwing out because I think I think this is an important conversation to have. Um, there are people, and I, I talk about this, so there are people that think I'm crazy. You're never going to make money. What the heck are you doing? But you know what? I I don't have to listen to anybody but myself. And if I'm quite honestly, I agree with you. If I'm going to be listening to someone, I'm going to be listening to my mentor. Mm -hmm. And some of my mentors are not alive anymore, but I'm still going to be listening to them because I'm not going to talk to someone that has a different idea for their life. Is the life of an entrepreneur, is it easy and carefree? Well, I will tell you that it is, it is hard work. It requires grit tough skin and a lot of people who knew me before you know before cancer I didn't have tough skin well guess what I learned to have it and if something is so important to you and you have that in your mind that you have this life in your mind and, and your why your why that makes you cry that is what drives the entrepreneur that is what keeps you doing the things that you do um i you know if you think about if you think about any major breakthroughs in this world people did not meet with success you know you might see someone and say that person is unbelievably successful you know and they and and people tell themselves it's because they they knew influential people it's because they had money it's because whatever you know what no the people that are successful are the ones that have a powerful imagination. They dare to dream. They have the courage. They have that why that makes them cry. 
And that's what gets them up every single day. And life of an entrepreneur, not, not easy. But once you get to where you need to be, that's when all those sacrifices and everything you did, it's just so worth it because you can live the life you want to live. So can, can we talk about, I think this is super important. Um, we, we did a clubhouse some time back about life balance. So can you tell people about your story? Because your story involves burnout. And that is something that is, is facing so many people right now is, is burnout. And so tell us about that. And, and how you got to the other side, because it's incredible. So Lisa brought up a really, really good point, and that's burnout, burnout. Now, this is one of the scenarios where I'm going to tell you guys, don't be stupid like me. Don't make this mistake. So solving problems for corporate America usually, well, I chose to only deal with C-suite executives because they had the big stick to make the change that's required based on our analysis and our objectives. And I can go on and on. That's not what this is about. So whenever you decide to take a vacation and you're reporting into the upper echelons, now this can be in any echelon of the company. Maybe you're putting rivets on the plane that's behind me. And all of a sudden, when you want to take a vacation, there's a, there is a stigma associated with that, especially in the United States. So all of a sudden you're not dedicated or you know her job is not, he or she's job is not that important or management is gonna ding you on your, uh, how well you're doing your job. It has nothing to do with that. And that's one of the things that we are going to be shifting in corporate America, in America, keyword America, whereby Europeans know that they work to live. They don't live to work. So that's a huge shift that we need to have happen, happen in this country. And it starts with the policies and, and the policy period of those particular organizations and the culture of those organizations. So what happened, what I did was allow the cray cray. So I did something crazy and not focus on what was important to me, okay? So it goes back to it. Let's focus on what's important to you and your family. So when I was working for Corporate America, I remember driving to work one day, crying out to God, tears ugly. Okay, I won't show you that face here. Would, everybody would freak out. Oh my gosh, her face changed. <laughs> so drop, crying out to God, asking him for a better way. And I'll tell you why. Every time I'd go see my doctor, the first words out of her mouth is, Sabrina, she would literally lean in. Sabrina, touch my knees. Sabrina, when are you going to quit that job? Go see her again. First words come out of her mouth. When are you going to quit that job? Now, God is amazing because about three days later, he gave me the opportunity, which is behind me, and I'm going to get out of the, the shot for just a moment. So one of the interests or one of the, the things I enjoy doing the most is traveling the world and taking pictures. This is one of my shots that, that uh, flying in from Cancun in 2020. Yes, everyone, 2020. God gave me the thumbs up to travel that year. is amazing. So, and that's a whole number, another conversation we can have about fear and faith and how those two cannot exist in the same place. And you have to choose one or the other. So choosing faith in God and living a fearless life in 2020, got on the plane, came back from Cancun, and this shot was one of the amazing shots that was taken from the window of the plane. And I say that to say this, when you know you have the signs, your doctor is begging you to quit your job, I hope that's not your case. Your child is saying, mother, I don't get to see you much. I miss you. Or fathers, you're really good at this. Well, I got to make all the money so the wife can take care of the kid. No, it's called co-parenting for a reason. It takes two. For single mothers like Lisa, I don't know how she's doing it. That puts her on, up on the 
I'm high-fiving her again, giving her another hug. It's a lot of work. So I got to get you my, to know your daughter better so she can come spend time with Auntie Sabrina <laughs> and give you a break. So it's, it's all about creating those memories because you don't know how long you're going to have your family member. So when I made the decision to transition from corporate America to entrepreneurship, when I made that decision, I did not know that I would be spending a great deal of time with my mother in what was the last years of her life. So this is why I'm telling you guys, it's so important to create those memories and figure out a way. And that's Lisa's great for that. She has tons of ideas on a way that you can bring in an additional revenue stream to help you before you transition. So one of the recommendations are, okay, what do you do? All right, I get it, Sabrina. I get it, Lisa. I know I want to transition. I want something a little better. I'd like my time freedom back. How do you do that? Where do you start? One of the areas we re my mother would recommend, this is her wisdom, is start learning, start training. When I worked for Corporate America, I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning study for three hours before I hit the grind and then get back. So if there's a particular niche that you have an interest in, how do you know? If you haven't trained in it, if you haven't attempted it, if you haven't tried it, if you haven't explored it, how do you know? So start doing those things. You know, maybe you just have to have the conversation of family, we call it family meetings, where you say, hey guys, I've heard you. I know that I'm time poor. Let's talk about what that looks like. How can we help each other so that I can transition and have more time? Here are some ideas. I want to start learning about this particular area. Is there any way you guys can respect my time for two hours in the morning where I'm doing training and know that you're going to, now you guys have to follow up. And because once you get to that point where you have more time freedom, let's fast forward the clock, if we will, and say, yes, you made the transition. You got the tip to turn in your resignation. And we'll have to do another episode where we talk about that as well. Live up to what you promised your family. If you said you were going to spend extra time with them, take them on more trips, do that. Don't leave them hanging because they're making sacrifices as well to get you to that point. So it's all about doing it as a team. And then for those on Lisa's team, she has ideas, she has brainstorms. Uh, she'll have brainstorming sessions with you to see what that looks like. And then what, what do you need to do? What are the, the immediate uh, needs, if you will, the immediate actions that you need to take to get you to the point? But you have to know where you're going. If I get on what's behind me, well, I might do that though and just say, hmm, let's just pick a spot and go. So that may not be a good idea if you're not that adventurous, but everybody needs a plan, right? God said, make the plan, write your vision, make it plain so you know where you're going, literally. So when I get on this plane, it's going to tell me where I'm going, unless it's a private plane. And I say, uh, Capitan, just choose file a fight plan, surprise me, okay? But that, that's not the norm. So we have to figure out where we're going. We need to know where we're going first. And then once we have that, let's go, let's go. And don't, don't listen. So just to wrap up, let's go. Don't listen to the naysayers. Anyone that tells you you can't, if the word can't comes out of their mouth on a regular basis, I would say you can't listen to them anymore. Apply those words to that person uh, for, I think we're on, vet their lifestyle and the results they have. If they are not successful in what they're doing, why listen to a failure? Unless they're going to explain to you how to fail, which is not what we're here about, for, about. <laughs> That's not what we're here for. So is that a good recap? Lisa, did oh, you leave? Sabrina, I'm I'm loving everything that you are saying. Um, I I I love. I I think that there's so much that you're saying right now that that resonates with me. And I love the you just saying, "Let's go." Like, pick the destination. 
you don't have to worry about the how. You know, that's going to come. If you pick that destination, whatever that is, mm-hmm. if that destination is um, a, a beautiful new house on farmland where we're going to have tons of horses, whatever it is, don't worry about the how. Just put that out. Put that out in the universe and it will happen and see that in your mind's eye. Strengthen your imagination. That's so important. So I, I love the things that you're saying, Sabrina. And, you know, the people that are the naysayers, the negative people in your life, you just, they can still be in your life, but you just have to not turn your ears off when they're saying negative things and, and don't give it much energy. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with me. You know, I've got this and that's okay. And you can, you can do that and, and uh, get out of the conversation. But something I also want to talk about um, is you, you had some challenges and I think it's really important. Not only did you have burnout challenges, but you had times in your life where you experienced discrimination and that, and, and that is, I think it's important for you to bring some of that in because we can learn so much from that and how you came from that and, and, and what that did for you in your personal growth. So can we talk about that? Sure. So this is a, there's all kinds of, and all types of discrimination. Oh, this discrimination because you may be a short man and all of a sudden you walk, walk in the room and all the tall men are like, oh, look, look at little man over there. You know, it can be any type of discrimination. So how do you, how do you overcome discrimination? Do you, so one of the recommendations is discrimination is someone else's problem. Number one, it's not your problem. It's their problem. Now, what can happen is their problem can impact your life based on if they're not paying you appropriately, if they're not uh, doing several things. So, so there's there's different ways to combat that in the legal sense as well. So I would recommend that you start with a journal. I mean, write it down so that it can become evidence in court. Write it down because it's it's so unfair. Because who says that just because you're wearing glasses, for example, you know, just because you're wearing glasses doesn't mean that you're the smartest person in the room. Or there's so many biases. And I would say, let's all start with our, ourselves. My mother was amazing because she taught us that to love all people, all races, irregardless. In one way, that you can start exploring that. And this takes, this is why it goes back to what we were saying earlier, focus on you. As you build who you are, your character, you're gonna be more open to different cultures, different ideas, different foods, different, just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong, okay? So for example, unless it goes against God's word, that's a whole nother conversation, okay. So let's say we're getting on the plane. And this is one um, amazing way to, to open your mind to different cultures, different races, different. And then you can understand the commonalities between those as well. So in a long story, let me back up for a second because I was going in a different direction. In a long story, start with you first. Be aware of your own biases. Be aware of maybe you may have some prejudices, and I'm gonna use that word, that you're unaware of, become aware. That's the first thing, okay? So my mother, going back to her wisdom, my mother always said, you know, people are people. It, she didn't care, she was not, even though she grew up in a time where, uh, in the South, let's put it that way, where the KKK is blatantly, Okay, my family were very, very strong. So in the South, way back when, I'm told by my ancestors that when a person of color would walk on the sidewalk and a white person was coming, they were, they were expected to get off the sidewalk and let them go back. My family was not that kind of person. No, 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 no. <laughs> As they were walking, 
They were going to keep walking because they are an equal. We're all human. We have the same blood, the same vessels underneath. Some of us have more melanin than others. End of conversation. And I even have family members who have Lisa's complexion. So we were a wide range of complexions, which was so exciting to see. So because of that, there was no concept of one race was better than the other. I remember my mother sitting down because my brother saw how the biases, and so did I, how the biases against people with more melanin in their skin was so evil and so corrupt that I remember my mother sitting down with my brother and he tells the story much better than I do, that people are people and people make their choices. And just because they make the wrong choices doesn't mean we are to hate them. We are to love everybody in spite of themselves because that's what God wants us to do. When we go to heaven, a lot of people believe white people are gonna be on one side, Latinos are gonna be on and race X, Y, Z. No, mm -mm. we go to heaven, God doesn't see our colors. I believe in celebrating differences. That's why we have them. If everybody was the same, why would we need you? We wouldn't. We would not need you on this planet if you were just like me, We just, or if you were just like Lisa. We would not need you. So because of that, think from that perspective and be aware of your own biases. And even if you have to go to someone who you grossly, and I could tell you guys some stories. In fact, in the book, I did tell one, but there are many others. And I believe in handling my own challenges myself. I never went to EEOC or anything like that. I just took you down. I didn't care. You know, if you were a man and you were misspeaking to me, you got corrected real quick. And if we needed to at that time, because I was in martial arts and I did a lot of sparring, I would even take you outside and we can settle it like men. I was open for that. But some of you may not have that, that level of being able to deal with it. So I say start with yourself first. See where your biases are. Okay, because once you see where your biases are, it makes it easier because God said, get the log out of your eye before you deal with your neighbor's speck. Your eye first, because it helps you understand a little bit more about where they're coming from, why they're saying some of the things they are, and how you handle it. Okay, so when you can control and, and, and some of the things that if I told you the audience some of the stories, all your mouths would be like, oh, <laughs> I can't believe you didn't put them up on charges. And these are people who actually ran or were CEOs of companies. Think about that for a moment. And, my, and the reason why I handled the situation the way it was, because this person had impacted so many lives in a negative way. If they were casually saying or using certain terms with me and they held a position of authority, I had to correct that quickly. So that next time they may think, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that because this person may react at a whole nother level than what Sabrina was training me through her reaction. So guys, love each other. Like one guy I follow says, you know, love each other. And one way we love each other is to see each other who, for who we are versus the complexion of our, that has nothing, it's the shell, the soul, you know, we're in a body. So get to know the person that you're working with, get to know them for who they are, give them a fair opportunity, just like you would any other person. So what I'm saying to you is see there's, if you're, if you're applying, if you're looking for someone with a, a certain skill set, let's try to say that again real quickly. If you're looking for someone with a certain skill set, look at their skill set first, the complexion of their skin or their sex or whatever they choose to do has nothing to do with it. Skill set first and try that skill set. If you're going to interview someone, Hey, put them on a Zoom call with five experts and have their skill test sets tested, especially in 
in high tech, you know, like IT, there's a lot of people out there that say they do certain things and they don't. So put them in, put them in a room together, you know, with other experts and, and throw questions at them. Test their skill set first. Put your bias aside, it has nothing to do with that person. Okay. So focus on that person first. And I know I didn't go a lot into the details of my story per se, but I'm giving each of you insight into what I would have liked to see happen. So those of you who are leaders, those of you who are aspiring to be leaders, definitely lead by example. And then your team members who have those biases will pick those up as well. And now you, you're able to counsel them on one-to-one. -one. I wouldn't embarrass anybody in front of the room, but be able to counsel them on a one-to-one -one because you've done it yourself. You've, you've cut up your biases. You've set your biases aside and share with them your personal story. Hey, guy, you know what? I used to think that all women were dumb and tell such and such. And this is how I handled it. And I realized that my, my bias was not right. So learn from my mistake. Don't be dumb like me. Tell them, don't be dumb like me. And then put them, and if you have to, the next time they, they have those biases that impact your organization, put them on warning and, the third, and, the, and give them a chance and give them the tools they need to make that change. Hey, I know you're still having a challenge. I want you to choose three people on your team that you have biases with, and I want you to treat them to dinner. You know, that's going to make it a little more challenging, of course, on the company, but they got to spend time with them, you know, put on a different face, get around them, and then give them a list of questions to ask, to get to know these people from their, their um, each, well, I shouldn't say these people, but your team members from each of their perspective. So then once they do that, and then if they still have those biases and it's just hard because you've already gotten the log out of your eye, I would get rid of them because you don't want that pollution to permeate, permeate your whole organization or go through your whole organization. Send a message. Biases of any type, racial biases in particular, sexual biases in particular are not tolerated in this organization. This is what's going to happen. They may sue you. Who cares? Stand for something. Stand for the right thing. Sabrina, love it. Stand for the right thing. That's right. Stand for the right thing. Take action. Those actions are going to be talked about. You are leading by example. And that is a way some people think we can't change the world. I'm just one person. Well, guess what? Yes, you can you can change the world and you can change the world of every single person that you interact with by the way that you respond to them, that you treat them, that you actively listen. And like you said, you trained and taught that CEO that that was not the right way to be, not the right way to treat you. So that that's very powerful. Stand for something and don't worry about those consequences because at the end of the day, you're making the world a, a better place. So we have a couple of minutes left and I just, I want to ask, when has your book, well, tell us about the book launch. When, it's available now, am I correct? Yes, it's actually available now, pre, pre, pre book launch. And then I will uh, make sure that Lisa has a link to the book as well as we are having a book launch party, which everyone here is invited. It's going to be on Martin Luther King Day. We're going to have complimentary speakers. Uh, you're gonna learn about five habits. There's, uh, there's, there are things in the works. That's why I can't give you a complete list. However, if you let Lisa know that you're interested in attending, we will definitely give you all the details via email. So it's so exciting to be able to share with each of you. Uh, the speaker lineup is in the works. We have a whole month. We like to do things on the fly. And for those of you who may want to contribute, where we talked today and you said, oh, I have some ideas on that subject area, you know, reach out to Lisa. Let her know and we'll see, we'll look at putting you on our speakers list for the day. It is going to be Zoom, however, because there's still a lot of people who 
who are not comfortable getting on what's behind me. The ultimate goal would be to have this in a place where you can hear that we can run out to the ocean at night, do some ballroom dancing to live music with a full course uh, meal. So that's to come when everyone's more comfortable to travel. But for now, we're going to launch via Zoom. Awesome. So I'm going to suggest that anybody that wants to have information about the launch party, you can just put party in the comments and then I will make sure that I get the details to you. And anybody that is interested in the link for Sabrina's book, you can put book in the comments. And if you want both, you can do book and launch. And then for people who want to connect with you, Sabrina, how can they reach out to you? They'll have your, your Facebook um, information basically um, from my Facebook page, but how, what is a good way for people to get in contact with you? Well, one way is you can follow us on Instagram. You can follow the trips through the photography. It's S as in Sierra or Sabrina, like my name, D as in Delta, travel one, the number one. So SD travel one. Awesome. And on my Instagram, I connected you, uh, we're, we're connected and I connected you with the, um, just letting everybody know about your, about this interview today. And there's a video um, that I will repost and it is your book launch video. It's about 10 seconds and it's really exciting. Very well done. I love it. I love the cover. It is a beautiful picture of you, Sabrina. So I am, I am super excited and I'm thinking any, any last, like, let's leave our, our, uh, the audience with one last thought, maybe something to, in honor of your mom. So what, mm. what would be a last thought or a last, maybe something that your mom told you or a practice, something that you might do every day to just leave the audience with? Well, what? Oh, yes, there's so many. So do we have any questions, Lisa? In, oh, from let me, so I'm, I'm still learning to be technically uh, to, to do this in, in an easier way because I'm still not super comfortable with technology. So let me see. I'm trying to see if there's any. I don't see any questions in the chat, but what I would like to do is just have, maybe people can do put in the comment section any questions that they have and please tag Sabrina so that she knows that there's questions and then um, she can reach out to you. So that's one thing. And you and I also just want the audience to know that you have multiple ways of, of making an income. So if people are looking at other ways and they say, you know, that sounds great what Sabrina is doing that they can reach out to you and find out what it is that you do because that's one way that they can supplement their income and start working towards their dreams. So reach out to Sabrina, she's amazing. And um, I'm just checking one more time to see. Okay, I will, our next Facebook Live, I will completely know what I'm doing, but the whole point as an entrepreneur is throw perfectionism out the window because if you wait for perfectionism, you will take no action whatsoever. So just do it, do it scared, do it messy, just get it done. And, uh, and then after, say as Jack Rand, business coach would say, yippee, right? Jack always says that, celebrate when you do things that are, are scary. So anything that you would like to leave us with Sabrina? So piggybacking off of what you just said, so my mother would say along those lines, do something, even if it's the wrong thing, do it. Got it. Because you, if you keep thinking, and I am an over, well, I don't want to say that anymore. I don't believe I am anymore, but I used to be an overthinkers anonymous, and now I'm not. So you just look at the choices and you do what is the best. And that's really what you're looking for. What's the best possible outcome? You make that choice with the information that you have because waffling back and forth is not good. Um, it's not giving a clear message about what it is that you want. So make a decision. And if it's the wrong one, 
guess what? You get to learn from it and go back and reflect. And sometimes yeah. those wrong decisions turn into taking you the right path. Right. So it's all experience. Sabrina, I just want to thank you so much. I'm giving you a huge hug. And I cannot wait to read your book. I'm so excited. So everyone um, have a beautiful, blessed day and weekend. And anybody that you think should hear Sabrina's words, please share this with them because they're, they're definitely people that could learn so much from her. And thanks, thanks again for your time. It's a very, very precious thing. And we appreciate it. Goodbye, Thank everyone. You. Bye, everyone. Many blessings.